Greetings people of YouTube and welcome to Galactic Civilizations 3, which uh, has released on this very day, the 14th of May, the year of our Lord 2015. And uh, there's a few disclaimers I need to make before venturing further into this video. Uh, disclaimer number one, I must tell you that this is very much a first impression kind of video. It's not some kind of in-depth analysis and comparisons to other 4x games and wh whatnot. Um, this is based on roughly about 10 hours of experience with Galactic Civilizations. Um, and I have also not played any of the other Galactic Civilizations um, uh, in this, the games from that series. Um, I have played and enjoyed uh, 4x games in general. Uh, for those of you who are extremely young and don't know what 4x means, they spend for uh, expansion, um, sorry, exploration, expansion, um, exploitation and extermination. The things you do in uh, a 4x game. Uh, in a, this type of uh, strategy game. So, um, I wouldn't be able to tell you how does this compare to, um, say, Galsiv 2, except for the fact that this is the first Galsiv game that has multiplayer in it, which I haven't tried, by the way, uh, and uh, also the first one that switched from the sort of square th grid to, um, from tiles to hexes. Uh, and that's kind of where my comparison and knowledge about Galsiv 2 ends. As aside from the fact that I think the art in Galsiv 2 looks better than this one, but the UI looks better in Galsiv 3. There you go, pretty much said it. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to start a new game and show you what kind of happens in the start with uh, what to expect, like, you know, first few minutes in the game, and then I'll show you a game where I've progressed a little bit more and I played about three four hours in that campaign and um, that's pretty much going to be today's video and I'll you know I'll tell you what I feel and think about the game by the way this is version uh, 0 0.97 the official review version that the uh, developer Stardock sent out um, so the full version which you may or may not buy is going to have a campaign and some bug fixes and stuff like that. Some minor improvements plus the campaign, which isn't here yet. So I can't tell you anything about the campaign either because it just isn't there. So, um, yeah, let's go back to starting a new game. Uh, there are eight races that you can choose from. Some of them you will recognize. Um, again, this is the, the few things I know about the uh, first two games is that these guys, so the Terrans or the humans, um, the Drangi, or again, I... You know, excuse me if my pronunciation is, is completely off. Um, and the Altarian res Resistance, or the Altarians and the Yor, are the ones that were in previous present in previous game, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have, you know what, let's just actually, for those of you who are new. So, the basic boring people, the um, cr war crazy, um, everything eating, consuming guys, uh, the ladies who look like the boring people but are also kind of kind and uh, aloof kind of race uh, the capitalists the religious the robots um, the sort of expandy dudes that are not really into war but they go everywhere and they just colonize everything and the mystical aliens from like the other universe or galaxy or something like that uh, who especially hate humans because they can see into the future or something like that. Which I think this is going to fe feature in the campaign again, which I do not have. Also, you can create your own race, uh, which can be fun. So you can choose either video or picture. If you, if you click for the video, you only get like what you, I just showed you. There's no new video. Um, but if you go with the pictures, you get some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, you get the dog dude in the robes. Um... This guy, this guy's pretty cool. This dude who's kind of leaning to the side. The funny guy, the hair thing, the green one, the guy with these things, and this this, this one as well, and the fox. Uh, on the twins, oh, pretty cool. Anyway, so let's say we go with the, uh, with the obese man. Um, so he could be your avatar, and then you could, you know, choose the background to whatever like this, and then the... <laughs> And for example, leave the avatar as the human guy, and uh, you can do you can do all this stuff. You choose the appearance of your ships, the traits of the builds of your race, general race overview, what do you call them, your you know the your original system name, 
um, some sort of personal characteristics, stuff like that. So, uh, but we're not going to do that right here. Uh, we're just going to start, say, with the boring humans, because I'm pretty sure most people start with the boring humans. So we're going to start with the boring humans. Um, and the, the next choice we need to make is what kind of galaxy we're doing. I'm going to go with defaults again, because I'm just going to show you the very, in this one, just the very basic stuff that's happening. So it's going to be a small galaxy, tight cluster. Um, everything's going to be sort of happening moderately, moderate amount of resources, um, more amount of planets and anomalies, etc. And victory conditions, again, gonna leave default. There's many ways to win the game, uh, military and peaceful. Um, and then we're gonna leave um, the game settings again. So this is where you, see, you choose the overall game difficulty. And this is where you choose who your opponents are. Uh, you can add them or remove them uh, as, you, as you see fit. Uh, I would probably not go for more than four races in the small map because that would be a bit overcrowded um, and you can also change their difficult level I've only played with the beginner so I'm gonna again go with the beginner here uh, beginner is moderately easy it's it's not the easiest thing out there but uh, you know it's very much doable for someone kind of jumping in into gal galactic civilizations without having any prior knowledge or experience with it but probably if you have played forex games beginner should be okay for the first campaign so let's do that. Let's get that first campaign going. Um, and I'll show you how all this begins and starts and happens in, in the very, in the very few, few uh, very uh, first few turns, if this actually will happen. All right, there we go. So we have the, the sort of kind of a bit angry looking um, human guy. And you start here, you start with Earth. The map is, you can see roughly, oh, actually it was, doesn't work by default anyway. So that's the size, the, um, these are the, the, the stars. So the stars will usually have planets. Not all of them will be habitable, but many of them will. And that's where you can, that's, those are the things you can colonize. We actually have a colony ship here. Oh no, that's our survey ship. That's our colony ship. Uh, and we do have one shipyard. So um, this is the overall sort of map view. You can. That's the zoom out level, then everything changes to the sort of symbolics as opposed to actually being able to see the units. Uh, and uh, we do not have any other seemingly habitable planets. Sometimes you get Mars nearby and you can colonize it, but I get not, not, not this time around. So we're going to send our ships to explore and a survey ship is going to survey. And this thing is probably going to go to the nearest stars. We can actually wait a little bit and see what those stars are. Um, meanwhile, I will show you what your worlds will look like. So Earth, and this is our colony capital. Anything adjacent to it will um, get additional benefits. So for example, what one of the first things you may want to build are factories. So you take factory and you put it next to uh, the colony capital right here and click build. It will be built in eight turns because of the level of production you have. Uh, we also have hyper silicates here which uh, help with research. All right, cool. Um, and so you, that's that's it kind of, you started the game. Now, if I were to, oh no, actually we can't uh, go really next to, to the next turn because we have to get research done. So this is our research dude. Um, strange size hands for a man his size. Um, you can research in four different categories. There's colonization research, engineering, warfare, governance, uh, and they are all what they sound like um, to get a lot sort of general idea. I'm not gonna go into like huge detail about this, but here is the, the tree. So the, the tree is also obviously um, categorized by the whatever thing you're researching. The colonization stuff is usually like improve the planet. This is like all kinds of engineering improvements, anything really. Warfare is, you know, your space warfare and your terrestrial warfare. Um, and the governance is like diplomacy, finances and all that. Um, one of the problems I have with the tree is that you can't zoom in and zoom out. It's always the same size and it's it's a bit unwieldy. Uh, it's not a huge problem, but it's it's a bit crap. And um, like especially when it's bigger, like with governance, it's kind of smaller. But with this one, it's sort of everywhere all over the place. Uh, one of the things I really like about the research is this bit here, which is a technical age. And um, again, like in any Forex game, you start with Age of Expansion, go to Age of War, sort of. So you explore and expand, then you... Um, exploit and which is kind of also somewhere here and then you start exterminating and then you may go if you want to uh to um 
uh, ascension. So you can win the game by be transcending sort of um, the, your mortal coil, kind of. I haven't done that, but that's I, I am led to believe that that's how that works. Okay, so let's choose something to uh, do. Let's get, let's get a universal translator. Why not? Because we're going to need that. Without that, we actually can't talk to anyone. And all their um, communication is going to be in an unintelligible language or a semblance of language. We got an idle ship, apparently. Oh, okay. This guy's not really going anywhere. So we're just going to leave him there for now. And we have an idle shipyard. There's only three pre-configured ships that we can... Um, we can build that, we can get a scout, we can get a colony ship or a constructor. Now, constructor is a very good thing to have because it um, allows you to build star bases. The two big structures you can build, or two actually, two only structures you can build in space are uh, dock, uh, docks and or shipyards and um, star bases. Star bases are your sort of space cities, you can think of it like that, uh, for mining or for culture or for financial stuff or for defense etc. So depending on what specialization you choose for. So let's go ahead and start building this for example. Um, before I guess before we make our first turn, so I'll show you what else is here. So this is a victory condition and how well you're meeting those, uh, each of those conditions. Uh, we're gonna uh, click there. So the governance is um, your leaning. So for example, you see that our income is three space credits per, per uh, week. So every turn is one week. You could, you may want to change that, and for example, increase the money you get up to. Well, it's not going to be much because we don't really have much built yet. To 17, obviously everything else is going to suffer. Your research is going to suffer. Your manufacturing is going to suffer. Uh, but this is a very useful um, tool to have overall. Uh, I usually go slightly towards manufacturing because, especially at early stages, you kind of need that. And uh, then also you have your control over um, over manufacturing as opposed to military stuff where you can switch between. So some of the manufacturing will go towards military efforts and how much of that goes towards military efforts, you will decide uh, on, on this slider. Uh, then you can have a list of your columns. You only got one, um, your uh, commands to different units and production places, your trade, which we don't have right now, and the timeline in terms of faction powers. But we haven't met any others, so we don't know what, how they're doing. So I think on... Oh, wait, did we not actually order the shipyard? Okay, there we go. Now we ordered the shipyard to build that. You can obviously rush things, as in, in many uh, Forex games. So if you wanted to, for example, we could just press buy and get it for uh, 1545 uh, B BC is probably some kind of credits, the space credits, I call them. So let's pass the turn. The ships were, they were the, which were given orders went for exploration. Um, they're kind of doing that on their own. And... Um, stuff happens so we got an idle ship again you know i'm just gonna make him travel over there so because that's pretty close and if we have something interesting to colonize there we're actually just gonna do that uh another thing i didn't show you is no technology is research is the same thing we just call technology up here even though it's called research down here and ideology is very interesting so you can be either uh pragmatic benevolent or malevolent uh, my favorite is malevolent so far and um, the way this works is you get certain type of events, usually when you're colonizing something, sometimes also randomly. And depending on what kind of choice you make, you will get um, buffs or debuffs, debuff, say on research or manufacturing or approval rating with your people or their growth, uh, the population growth rate, the food production, etc., etc. Um, also, but there will though, many of those will also give you points for these, and then you can spend these uh, to develop those traits and those traits come with certain uh, perks so for example i'll show you in the next next load i'm gonna do is um like i think i have motivational malevolence or something like that so it gives me plus 10 manufacturing on our home world um and this one gives you the intimidation center which is if you build those then you get more um ideology points and you can become more malevolent as as sort of time goes on i've done a bit of pragmatic i really, haven't really done benevolent stuff to be honest it's it's very bright for my eyes so i usually go with sort of darker brown red shades here but this is a very interesting uh thing in the game i again it's it's kind of in terms of the art i think i mentioned this i think the second one looked kind of better in terms of art not in terms of ui ui is in, uh, clearly improved in Gal in galaxy 3 um but yeah this kind of this is probably not the worst example. There's some planets that look really ugly. 
Um, I think Earth in this case is sort of okay, even though like the model here and the textures on this thing are, are a bit like 1999 almost. Well, maybe 2003, um, which is, I don't know, it's a bit weird. It's, it's, it seems like an easy thing to implement, but for some reason, some of the stuff. This is okay, I guess. It's a bit like mobile game looking sort of interface. It's it's very functional. I like how this is um, sectioned into. So you know you can you can clearly tell how much what you're getting from from what in this world and how much approval you have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and everything is is very clear, but just not very pretty. So okay, we got that out of our way. Um, let's try to explore and colonize something. Okay, so we discovered a new new um, new star, uh, and it has a planet. So this there has one plant here called Alkaline Prodigy 2 is dead, so we can't colonize. This one's dead. And actually that one's dead too. So um, doesn't seem like we, we're going to have a successful life there. Uh, let's continue our way. Maybe he has another planet. Something that is actually useful. Maybe we'll find out, I guess, next turn. Oh, I think we discovered more stuff. Durantium is a type of mineral you can harvest. So you would use... Actually, let's rush the production of our... Um, our little ship here, which is the constructor. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spend all this cash money business on it, and it will be done next turn, and we can then utilize it. And I'll be able to show you. Is this asteroid really? Oh no, there you go. Mars is right here. We could have colonized Mars. I just completely missed that it was there. It's not exactly. It's very habitable, so it would work as a colony, but it's not the greatest thing to colonize. Uh, you know what? I am actually. Is there a next? Where's the next star? Okay, though that's those are pretty far away. These are kind of okay. I'm gonna bring the ship around to for it to come down here, because clearly there are no more planets around there. Um, and see if this has any better planets. See, we can always colonize Mars later because it's in our sort of domain. No one's really gonna rush and colonize it. I hope. So let's do that. Uh, we surveyed first. Anomaly. Anomaly is kind of like a treasure chest or a loot chest. You open it and you get stuff from it. For example, from this, we got some knowledge about Universal Translator and it helped us finish it, I believe, or get, you know, 25% done for us, sort of free, re uh, free research. Sometimes you just get free money, uh, which is, you know, usually very welcome. Um, so, yeah, there's no planets there. This guy's traveling over there. I think we just met someone. No, that's just space junk. Never mind. I thought there was a ship. Well, I guess it used to be a ship at one point in its existence. All right, let's travel down here. Okay, we discovered another planet. And it's lush. It's class 9, so it's not too bad. Small, has low gravity. Um, uh, and helpful for manufacturing, obviously. And tourists love the low gravity. I guess they just frolic in it. So we're going to use this planet to... Um, we're going to colonize this one, is what I'm trying to say. So, obviously, you get the first colony ship for free. Which one is the idle one here? Oh, of course, we got the... We got the constructor. Now we could use asteroids. Aren't that good? Ideally, we would not some some other kind of better place. You know, what? I'm gonna keep the constructor there for a little bit. Now you know what? It doesn't matter. We just go and colonize. Not colonize. So we just build a um, a star dock or a star. What what is it that you can build? I forgot the name of it. We are gonna build the star base. Um, up here somewhere because there is a resource we can mine there. Actually, I'm gonna go this way. Uh, please. Oh, I thought you could move, buddy. Or maybe you can't move. All right, that's cool. Uh, we need to give the shipyard something to do. So why don't we just make another one? Because they are pretty useful and they help your economy, uh, especially in the early stages. All right, cool. So we make the turn. Um, and we got another. I think mysterious stuff so the research is over and these are the results and you get to do new research and so on until you either win or lose the game so for example this time around let's do interstellar travel uh, which increases the, our moves and you know allows all kinds of good research we're going to need uh, in the near future so let's colonize this planet um, in fact why don't we why, why am i not moving anything anymore Okay, I think moving 
start working again. Sorry, I don't know what the hell was going on there. Um, so why don't we, I was saying, go over here and see if there's maybe even better planet down here. But it doesn't look that way, does it? It looks like there isn't. But that's fine. That is not a problem. See, now we discovered some money because there were some cargo pods or whatever over there. Yeah, this star only has one planet and it's good enough for us. So we're going to use that and we're going to move this guy. So we know, we know that Durantium is there. So maybe they will find something else as well. It's an artifact. That one is probably just going to be picked up by this, uh, by the survey ship. I believe that's how that works. And we're just going to move up here. I'm going to have this thing in, in the corner there in the hopes of or here that something else will be also engulfed into this space, which we can, which is our like effective space for the star base. Uh, okay, so that's done. I think can we move? No, not yet. And mm, okay, let's move up. And you can name it whatever you want. Um, let's leave it whatever it is. Carbdigian. Why not? Um, and this is your first colony. You get a little animation happening there. Uh, and this is the colonizing event, which will determine your. Um, your um, stance on things or whether you're a benevolent ruler or a pragmatic one or a malevolent one so let's read this up so you get an idea of what's going on the primitive spe species that occupy this planet was once uh far more wait what the primitive species that occupy this planet this planet was once more technologically advanced that doesn't make sense does it uh and well it makes sense it's just not very well written and accidentally ruined their civilization uh in some kind of nuclear war several hundred years ago ruined cities dot the planet and will likely contain valuable resources we could easily recycle but the natives regard these ruins as sacred and insist we stay away from them what are your orders so and these are the three choices we get so the benevolent choice is which will give us plus 20 influence in the area i would assume um influence is kind of like your borders in civilization so we're not going to stomp through someone's graveyard we will of course respect the dead of these people declare the cities of off limits to uh for development and set aside one or two to for open air museums so we can learn from these people's mistakes. Uh, the second choice, the pragmatic one, is we'll work with the locals to determine the boundaries of the most sacred sites, but we'll excavate and recycle the rest. So kind of the middle ground is always the pragmatic one. In this case, you get 10 pragmatic points and 10% manufacturing improvement on the on this world. Um, uh, and the malevolent one is uh, that's a real shame and we will promise to feel bad about it when we're throwing everything through the recyclers. Um, I find it that this is the, usually the funniest one, and I think that's why I mostly go through with it. Um, and plus you get manufacturing up, and manufacturing is, is pretty much everything in this game. So, unless you're really going for the peaceful resolution or whatever. So let's go with the malevolent, and uh, this is our city. It's very, sorry, this is our planet. It's very dark and icy. This is our capital, um, or colony capital rather. And uh, it can't really be adjacent to anything we can probably uh terraform here a bit and have something get the adjacency bonus but we can't really do it right now so again you would probably first start with like a basic factory somewhere yeah even there that's fine like that that would work and then continue on this, these tiles also i think uh give you additional wait which one is that okay that's the one we built the additional stuff um for example, certain things that you build, like this is good for manufacturing or research or something like that. So you can, you want to probably try and um, assign specifically, you know, well-suited buildings for those sites, etc. Okay, and see where our borders widened. We, this is now our another world. We can probably again, Mars, we can do Mars, should be okay. And the worlds change in, in their class. So this is class nine and the Earth is class... 11, I think they go up to class 17 or something, which is like the perfection type world or something like that. They call it the jewel of the uh, universe or something like that. All right, so let's move this guy up here. We are not really finding any other resources, are we? It's just the artifacts. Um, okay, let's... Oh, I can do ideology points spent. Okay, so we have one malevolent uh unlock available and we can choose out of these four ones here because you have to go you know you have to unlock the first one to go to the second one etc obviously 
So this one would give us a free uh, frigate class warship, which is pretty cool and something I go for usually. Intimidation center, also nice. Um, then uh, this is gross income plus 10%, also pretty cool. And then all is shared borders penalties minus one. Again, quite nice thing to have. Let's go, for example, with this, uh, which is the aggression um, perk. And we're going to say yes to that. Oh, did we say yes to that? Actually, we didn't say yes to it. We just double click it. Now we did. And magically, uh, a frigate appears and we have an extra ship. And we can also use that, for example, to explore right now because we don't have any enemies. This little dotted line is how far we can travel. That will be improving, uh, you know, the more worlds we have, the better ships we have in terms of what um, kind of engines we give it, etc. If we research, for example... Um, interstellar travel which is something i think we are researching right now yes okay so after that i think our range will improve by plus one so this will be moved up etc and every ship has a different kind of range so for example this uh constructor can go pretty far while this dude can't really and then the survey ship can go a bit more or the scout i guess the survey probably even more yeah surveys range is even higher etc um so yeah that's it's pretty much, pretty much how that works. Uh, I guess the last thing we're going to do here is... Uh, oh, we haven't looked at Diplomacy, have we? D we Again, I'll show you. You know what? I'll show you Diplomacy in the other game because there's no one to Diplomacy with. And the designer is probably something also I'm going to show you in the other one. Um, right, so let's just wait another turn and then establish this thing. It, it's kind of shame to waste it on one resource. Um... But it doesn't seem like we have much choice here. Okay. Colony built the thing. So again, if you stack them together, you get adjacency bonuses. Probably even better to do here because you get a bonus from this and from that. The moon is scary, man. It go passes by you. I just feel like, oh god, what's going on? So, like, for example, build on the factory there. Uh, and those things stack up. And then um, because this uh, shipyard is sponsored, you can see a little line here, uh, by, uh, by the planet nearby. So see, this is the sponsor. We can also actually add another sponsor to it and it would also provide additional speed of construction. So I think if I were to, for example, say assign this sponsor, uh, so if I remove it, the, the construction time is 20 turns. If I add another sponsor, then it goes down to 13. Um, so it, sponsorship is kind of less because it's further away and has less production value, um, but it's already a huge improvement because like it's almost cut time almost uh, to a half. Um, and as well, long as the, this this guys this guys here don't have their own yard, they're fine to sponsor this one because this one can like pump out things at a um, incredibly faster rate, which is pretty cool. All right, so idle colony really? Are they, oh, this one's idle because they already built their thing. That was pretty quick. Let's give them like a research lab, for example. Doesn't really matter. So let's see if we can establish that. I wanted to move it a little bit higher. So let's pass the turn. Yeah, I think this is a bit of a waste of time so uh, we didn't really find anything here so we can might as well just do it so we go into um its commands and you can either turn it into a shipyard or a star base uh, we don't really need the shipyard out in the middle of nowhere so we're going to turn it into a star base our first star base is built and then you go into the star base to make it into something actually useful it has a defense and attack value by default so like if someone attacks it it will be able to defend itself as it a shield etc etc but we're going to make it into a mining, uh, give it a mining ring, as opposed to a culture ring or a military ring, uh, because uh, we uh, need to mine that durantium, which is used in ship construction. So we're going to add that. It's immediately added. If you want more rings, you can do that, but you need to send additional constructors to this starbase, in fact, to do that. So, and this is also becomes our influence, as you can see, same color as our faction. So this kind of turns into your land, quote unquote. And whatever is inside is, it, you can't see it yet, but you will see it in a turn. So we've discovered some treasure and we started mining Durantium, which is a silly name. So, and there you go, you see that it is being mined, like the, the resources are going there and we now have that resource, you can see it here. So whatever ships may need uh, Durantium to be built, we can now provide it. Sometimes there's buildings that need that as well. And again, we can provide that. And we found a dead world next to this star we haven't explored yet. Uh, and now, now that we've done sort of, this is what, how, how the first few turns go, essentially. 
Uh, now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you already discovered other people and want to war with them and they all hate you and things aren't necessarily bad, but everyone thinks that you're a dick. So welcome to my Your Empire. Uh, this is about three and a half, four hours into the game probably. Uh, you can see the little minimap on the side. The purple is us, I was playing here as Your. It's the same size map, same, same everything like I showed there, but like, you know, way into it. Uh, at this point, I am at war. Let's go to Diplomacy, which we were not unable to experience in the previous game because of its early nature. Um, so you can see here, there's four races. That's us. We're at war with the Drangin or Drangin, and uh, we are at war with humans. And we are not at war with the Altarian Resistance, but they don't really like us. They're pretty hostile, but we're we have peace so far. Um, they're, they're, they're not very nice. They're always like demand money of you because they think they're really great at whatever. I think the earth is actually so upset that they don't even, they don't, they don't even talk to us, do they? Yeah, we have nothing to say to you. <laughs> what are these guys? They talk to us. And we can even offer them to like, you know, the, the regular diplomacy stuff in, in the uh, Forex game. So we can even offer them something to get peace. But actually we don't need peace because we are the most powerful, um faction if you look at the graphs here this is the power and it's us so the overall power we're not doing like we don't have the best stuff in everything we have economic power and we have a, a ton of military power i um there's a, like a snowball effect at one point that you have star bases uh, attached to like four or five colonies and then uh, you know you start making ships and at some point they make, you make so many ships that um, you just can't overtake anything. But this is, again, I'm playing on easy. I would doubt it would be so easy on, um, on like, even a normal difficulty, I, I, would, I would think. So let me show you. So this is our uh, home world, um, Iconia. And this is what a fully sort of decked out home world looks like. So I have, in, in this case, I have uh, five manufacturing plants, uh, orbital defense, military academy helps with defending, uh, consulate, which helps you spread your influence. Uh, then you have uh, this, uh, the research facilities, market, intimidation center I mentioned before, uh, Durantium refinery, um, and this is some sort of um, indigenous stuff that you, you, you get there. Now let's show. I'm going to show you how the, some of the like one of the planets is like super ugly one. This one doesn't have as much space because of the how much continent there is. I believe I've pretty much maxed out the possible building space for everything at this point. Oh, interesting thing about the Yor, which is the faction I'm playing with, assembly here is basically making more citizens. So they don't really multiply. You need to, like, you need to consciously create those guys. But you know, after you spend your production on that and you create them, then you add like two billion citizens again, quotation marks, uh, to and which is kind of cool. I I, I like playing with Yor. They are peculiar, but in a interesting way. Um, and this is, Melisanda is actually doing quite well as well, even though it doesn't have that much space around it. Um, oh, there we go. See, look at, look at this. What, I don't know what's, what is this meant to represent, like this whole green vomit around it. I, I kind of get that we're going for some exotic alien look, but it looks really weird. So I, yeah, I don't know. You see that I, I usually go with a lot of manufacturing, and this is an entertainment center because they were not doing the approval wasn't doing too. I mean, it's it's decent. Seventy two percent is is okay. Your in general have a pretty high approval rating. Um, yeah, we have quite a few. These are the things planets the, the, the planets we that we took over from the humans. There you go. That's Earth in you under your control. Your control. Get it? Huh? Anyway, uh, I'll show you. So this is what we conquered. Our borders used to be like that, and then. Um, we went to war with the Drangi or Dren, whatever their name is, the the cannibalist apes, uh, and the humans as well. Humans were the weakest faction here, so it wasn't really that hard uh, to do that. For example, here we have um, taken over Earth, um, but they have another planet, uh, Mars, which they also colonized, but it is within it is within our influence, it's sort of within our borders, so to speak, but it's there, it still belongs to them. Our ginormous fleet, which isn't like, which is ginormous by, you know, um, not 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 in an objective sense, but like in this scenario at this point, no one really has that much uh, military power. Uh, we can't really do anything with it because this is a space uh, fleet. They are they can't just invade a planet. So for that, we need to build um, invade invading forces. I think we are building them. 
uh, somewhere here. So Melisanda's shipyard one here is building that thing. So we can even actually just make it happen a bit faster. So instead of, oh, we can't buy it. We just don't have the money. All right. So let's pass that turn. I'll show you how the invasion happens. Uh, the the uh, enemy turn also takes a bit longer because I don't, I don't really care about the... Oh, those guys are here? Damn. They are destroying planets. Oh, hello, um, human-looking lady. She's upset that we have borders together or something like that. These guys are pretty... They mean business. They're pretty serious. We should probably just go over here and try to deal with them. Uh, because I don't want them to interfere with my invasion of Mars. Um, usually you get invaded by Mars, but not in this case. Oh, this is our research dude, so they're a little bit different from the normal human being who was doing research in the previous one. We got point defense or whatever. It doesn't really matter at this point. Let's do like interstellar mining because why not? And I just need to wait. What is this? Catters 4. Uh, I don't know, man. Catters 4. Uh, why don't you build a consulate, for example? Uh, and just trying to get to that point where we can have the invasion ship. Where are, oh, God. They're going for me, aren't they? Oh, there we go. So the invasion ship is built. And so what you do is you need to load your troops into it. And, you know, the troops can't just come from thin air. They come from the planets that you have there. So this is your slider for how many, how many troops you want to put in there. These are, I believe, in billions. So we're going to put 2 billion people in it. Which is, I believe, going, I believe is, is going to be enough. And that's the ship here. It's pretty big. Uh, it's sort of defenseless. So we need to get it uh, to where it needs to go, which is Mars over here. Uh, as fast as we can. And we're going to use these guys um, to just kind of position them here so that the, the, the bad people from over there can't really attack our troops and just lose 2 billion units would be would be pretty bad, is what I'm saying. And we should need to order this um, shipyard to do something else so they could, for example, do the, um, the constructor unit. So, for example, like that. All right. And let's see. Oh, one thing I didn't show you is the battle view, which is horrible. So I have a chance to do that now. Good thing that these guys are attacking, actually. So let's tr see if we can catch up with them. I wonder if they... They don't have an invasion force there, so I'm not sure what they're doing around our planets. These are our planets here. Maybe they're actually going to attack those, or maybe they're hunting the pirate. There's a pirate base I haven't taken out yet. Um, this dude... Yeah, I don't know. Like, just kind of wander around, maybe see if the humans are up to anything. No good. Okay. And I'm going to leave those guys there. And these dudes are going to stay there. And it's our turn. Oh, crap. Oh, that's not good. Uh, they exploded some pirates. And we have a galactic event um, happening here. Uh, I'm not going to sort of worry about this right now. I'm just going to continue on uh, and cut to the point where, you know, to, to show you what I actually want to show you. Those kind of galactic events are essentially um, like weather. So something happens to everyone and everyone experiences it. And you decide what, like, you know, what to do with it, sort of. Here's an example of, um, of a battle we can have. So the uh, Martians built a um, shipyard and I'm going to attack it with the forces I have positioned here. Um, before you go into the battle, this is what you see. You can either cancel the battle if you're attacking or go into the, do a quick battle where you just see the results or view the battle itself. So they added this new battle view. Um, our forces, they're uh, their sort of collective power and then the enemy forces and their collective power are here. Uh, we're going to view the battle to show you how horrible this looks. So this is a top-down camera. It kind of follows stuff and you're shooting them and there you see got the cinematic camera and then you have the free camera. I'm just going to do the, the default one. So you see things are happening. Stuff's flying. Uh, you can't really do anything, it's just for viewing, like you can view your ships, because obviously some people make their own ships. It's, it's not necessary, but it's something you can do. Uh, I think we should actually take this thing out without losing anyone. That's that's the impression I got, but maybe I am... Oh wow, they actually destroyed one of our ships. Is that actually... I can, can I skip this? Alright, this, this looks pretty bad. Um, there you go, victory. Yay, alright, done. So we lost a ship. Can't believe we lost a ship on that crappy base. Wow. Oh, shipyard, whatever, whatever. And this is our invasion of Mars. Um, and there's a couple of choices depending on what you have researched so far. 
Uh, and the planetary invasions are a little bit different. You can't really see. There's no visual visualization besides like this this screen you see here. Uh, so this is our fleet here. A one transport with two point what two two point where well, okay two billion. Sorry, there's no reason to say two point oh, but there it is. Um, soldiering is plus twenty percent. I think it means like how well trained they are, and the casualties expected of us are low. Then there are. Um, 11.2 uh, uh, billion whatever people I guess or soldiers living on Mars or people who could fight uh, they have no planetary defense the resistance I think afterwards this is what it means I th I'm not entirely sure is 10% they will go down if we switch the uh, the way we are gonna do this warfare and a likelihood of success here is 71% um, but I have researched planetary bombardment which uh, costs uh, 500 uh, space credits, which we can't afford. We switch to that. Likelihood of success, 100%. Uh, resistance is down to 20% from 70. And uh, I guess this is how well they, they, how, you know, their morale before the battle. But if you bombard them beforehand, their morale goes down to 20%. And the casualties expected go down from high to very high. Um, and if we do that, uh, victory you get the little uh, result screen uh, our casualties are 0 0.8 surviving population is 1.1 really we killed that many people jesus wait our po population or their population i wonder i guess our population is 1.1 improvements lost three um sectors lost three i think the the earth was so much destroyed by the bombardment that actually there's less of land to develop anything onto and they lost no i guess that's them they lost 10 billion people in the bombardment we just killed 10 billion people on Mars, um, so that's that's fun. But it's our planet now. So yeah, yeah. There's not there's nothing left. It was bad to begin with, and now there's nothing left. What is this even? Bonsatium uh, deposit. Oh, it's kind of food. All right. It's factory. This and that. We could also do a bit of terraforming here, and add another tile somewhere, um, because we have that research. So for example, if I wanted to, I could do another one here or something or here, and do like another factory. Uh, and that will be done in 10 turns. But yeah, so we conquered Mars. Um, heavy casualties. Our borders shifted all the way to the to the left. I think they have only one word left, uh, the humans. And they are probably not feeling great about this. But yet they will not talk to us. That's kind of the diplomacy problem I have in most Forex games. Where like, at this point, they would be like, you know what, take everything. But please don't kill us. But instead... Um... Oh no, wait, they, they want to talk. You are hopelessly outnumbered. It's time to negotiate for peace before you are completely wiped out. Alright, let's see what we can offer them. Or what they can offer us. Oh, they could give us all kinds of tech. Hey, you know, I, I could technically take all their tech, I guess. Um, and um, then kill them anyway, or something like that. He looks very brave for a man who's about to die. Anyway, we're not going to do this right now. But, you know, diplomacy is, is very familiar, I guess. At least it is for me. It, it looks like something you've seen in, in most forex games and it's also kind of broken in the same way that it's broken in all the forex games at least for me maybe it works for some people and they're very happy with it anyway so that's kind of the stuff you can do in here oh the only thing we haven't seen is the design stuff so um in terms of design i haven't really done this and i'll show you why so if i were to say oh new design um just must select the hull of the ship okay how is there an, uh, another mode here? I swear it. Okay, I figured it out. So you, you select one of the hulls, and then um, you can... We only have, like, small and tiny ones. Then all the parts that you can attach to it. And I just looked at all the parts, and um, I just went like, eh, and I haven't done it, because it looks like there was so much stuff. But I've seen people build some interesting um, sh ship designs, made some interesting ship designs. And they look pretty cool. You can all spill, spin all of this stuff around, make the ships the way you know the way you want them to look. Um, and you know they usually look if if uh, some players make it a little bit less boring than the, the the stuff that is given to you by default. I haven't really gotten into it, and not because it's you know I'm not I don't think it's horrible. I think it's good that it's there. Just the, the sheer just the way it looked. It didn't really uh, I didn't really find it very enticing. But other than that, I mean, I probably there's no problem. And again, this, the stuff I've seen people make, the pictures of it, uh, were pretty pretty cool. They're pretty cool. So if you're into this, I guess you can do it. It's it's not. 
I believe you can play this game even just by ignoring the ship design, but probably some of the things are easier or better or more exciting if you actually do not ignore the ship design. I have so far ignored it, um, fortunately or unfortunately, but um, that, that is the case. So this is pretty much it. This is uh, probably all I want to tell you about uh, Galactic Civilization uh, 3. Um, it is £30 currently, came out today as of 14th of May, and it's on Steam. The link is in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please consider supporting it any way you can. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.